Uh, well, this is um, a look at something called super and overriding and how these two interact. Now, um, if you look at this uh, class colored point here, which extends point, uh, you'll see it's got a method called clear in it and uh, so it has points. So this overrides that version there. Sometimes, however, that's not what you want. And when that is the case, um, you can call the one in the super class by saying super dot clear like that. Now, if we have a look at what's going on here, we got point and um, this uh, um, edge thing here, which is size 20 and x and y locations, and all it does is just move the x and y by that amount. And if it lies um, outside the edge, that's the absolute value being taken there. If it's greater than or equal to edge, either of those x or y coordinates, then it calls clear, which put, prints out point clear and sets the point to zero. And for colored point, of course, it's the um, uh, same sort of thing as point, but it's also got a variable a field um, color in it. And uh, its version of clear prints out colored point clear. And then it calls the superclass version, which would put out point clear. And when it returns from that, it sets the color to zero. Now, if we take a look at what uh, happens in this case, uh, we declare this variable point of uh, type point here as p of type point to be a new point. And uh, then we do this move. Obviously, when you do a new here, a new object gets constructed and that will obviously be initialized to zero. So when you do this move 20, it's going to equal to 20 there, so that will trigger clear. So you get point clear, which is quite exactly what you'd expect. If we now set this uh, variable uh, p to be um, new colored point instead and uh, do the same thing, um, what happens is um, uh, clear gets triggered again and um, instead of course of that version it's the overridden version which gets called so colored point clear gets written out and uh, then point clear when superclass version gets called all pretty straightforward really um, just have to remember that um, uh, that may be that p there may be a type point, but it refers to an object of class colored point, and it's the object referred to. It's the class of that which matters. Now, uh, just one last thing to mention: um, you can't use super in object because object doesn't have any super class. Of course, why exactly you want to be rewriting object for is uh, another matter altogether. Uh, but uh, should you ever wish to rewrite object and write your own version for some reason or other, then um, you can't use super in it. Okay. Um, when you've got a lot of um, uh, instance methods which uh, override one another, like here, um, what decides which one gets run? is the uh, runtime class of the object that you're using to get to the method. So um, uh, if we take a look at to what we got here, um, they've all got uh, method s which returns um, a string, either one, two or three, and uh, there are three classes and they all extend each other. And here's the um, uh, test uh, uh, method here, and uh, this little thing here just um, I just don't do a lot, just uh, creates a new T3, that's that class there, and uh, calls test. So, of course, um, when you get into test, um, uh, the uh, uh, this, that variable, is uh, going to be given by what that is, new T3. Okay. Because that's the uh, object which has been created. So, um, this call here, S. Uh, just by itself there is effectively this dot s in fact and um, the uh, backslash t by the way is uh, our tabs so if you call s straight away obviously you're going to get uh, or in this class t3 it'll be this one here which just returns 3 
Now for this you do super s, so it's going to go to the um, super class of the class that you're in, so it will be 2 which is returned for that call. And I've had to split these over two lines. Um, uh, for this, if you try and coerce uh, this to being uh, um, T2 or T1, it doesn't make any difference. You still don't change the runtime class. And um, as I'm saying down here, the actual method call depends on the runtime class of the object. And casting, which is what's going on here, does not change the runtime class. It merely checks that it's compatible with the specified type in the cast. Um, it, cha it changes effectively the view of the object and not the actual object itself. Because uh, the object class is uh, fixed, it never ever changes. So that's why it's impossible using this to get to 1. Which is reasonable when you think about it because it's been overridden by T2 and um, it's uh, considered uh, not a good idea to allow a class to probe right up the hierarchy past something which has been overridden so on. that's not thought to be a good idea so normally classes only deal with um, uh, stuff which is either inherited and that's fine because um, inheritance is under control of the class. It can prevent uh, stuff being um, inherited just by declaring it to be private. So if it's not done that, it's obviously decided that it's okay. Um, a class, of course, which overrides another method is trying to stop anything below it from, from accessing or using that method. So that's uh, fair that it, it can't get to uh, uh, this one here which returns 1. So you'll never get 1 out of that using that. Of course, um, if you had a, a variable which referred to something of um, class T1, then of course it would give 1. But that's different. You can't get it from this position. Okay. Now to uh, contrast what we've just done with uh, methods, here's the same sort of thing with fields. And with fields it's the um, um, the view, I suppose, which counts. Um, um, view, by the way, is not a technical term. Um, it's, um, uh, it just means that I suppose casting actually does matter in this case. So here we got the same sort of thing again. Um, started with an interface here, and uh, uh, working X in each case, uh, and the same sort of thing again. Um, by the way, you notice that um, that integer at the top is going to be a um, public uh, static final, by the way, and this is not a public static final, but the same reasoning applies. One thing can over, can hide, I should say, another, even if they're, one's a static and the other isn't. Just thought I'd mention that. We'll talk more about that later. Um, so here we go, x is 3, obviously, in, in here, because it's just picking up that one. If you say super x, it's going to go to the super class, and of course it will be 2 there. If you cast it to type t2, um, of course it's going to give 2 still. Let's do that. And if you cast it to t1, it will give 1, and if you cast it all the way up to the top here, it will give 0. Which is, um, of course, very different to what you get with um, methods.